Taylor Davis. I am the proud president of the board of directors for the KDM Center for the Arts. It is so great to see everyone here tonight. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order and confirm that we have quorum. Tracy. Once again, thank you all for taking time to be here. It shows a commitment we all share to the Acadiana Center for the Arts. Before we get started, let's do some housekeeping. I'd like to call a motion to approve the minute for our last meeting, October 16th. Motion. I have a motion. I can move, but you should probably put my last name in it. Just have the neck, and I'm not sure. So. <laughs> There's an amendment. Just to add my last name yeah. in the minutes, so that's consistent. <laughs> and then I'd like to make a motion to approve as a minute. Can I get a second? Oh, a second. Sarah seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. All right. I look around the room, I see faces of people who genuinely care about the role the arts play in shaping the culture and the future of KDM. This past year has been nothing short of remarkable. The growth we've seen, the numbers, the people impacted, it is big, y'all. And it's only possible because of the quality work the ACA does and the commitment of every single person in this room. You should all give yourself a little applause. I'd like to take a moment to shine the light on two important things happening right now. First, we just launched ACA's 50th anniversary season. And let me tell you, it's going to be one for the ages. We, we came last week for one of the most amazing shows we've had, uh, Irma Thomas. Did, did anyone get to go to Irma Thomas? If you didn't. Sorry. <laughs> but we announced the show in such an amazing way, and we gave these magazines, uh, the, the, these out after. And uh, my wife, who is a marketing person, public relations graduate uh, here at UL, she was just commenting, kept commenting on how impressive this is. And so I just want to thank the folks who put this together, and we're just so excited for the season. It is going to be fabulous. Tickets are on sale for members uh, at a nice discount till December 3rd. Uh, then we open them to the general public. Great stocking stuffer if you're looking for that, that gift that, you know, for that person that has everything. They certainly don't have that. Second thing, we're wrapping up this year with a bag, the Pelican Ball on December 7th. Show of hands of people that have been in the Pelican Ball. How fun is the Pelican Ball? It's so fun. It, so is, fun. <laughs> it is the best party in town, no doubt about it. It is so much fun. And we get to honor some of our culture's leaders um, and, and, and really get to bring ACA out to, to a, in a fun way to folks. It's going to be an unforgettable night. Now let's talk about the nuts and bolts that keep moving, help keep us moving forward. I'm pleased to welcome Jeremy Moe, CPA for Darnell Sykes and Frederick, to walk through the 24 audit report for the ACA. Jeremy, we appreciate your expertise and the work you've done to make sure ACA is in good financial standing. The floor is yours. <laughs>
Stop a second, please applaud. <laughs> no questions, just applaud. <laughs> Again, my name is Jeremy Moe. I'm with Darnell Sykes and Frederick CPAs. We perform the audit for the Indiana Center for the Arts. Again, this year for uh, June 30th, 2024, we have our bound report. Uh, it's a new report for the board members. I'll go over it at a high level. And again, if I pause, please just applaud. <laughs> uh, pages one and two is our independent auditor's report. So if you turn to page, pages one and two, uh, it states uh, that we audited Acadian Center for the Arts as of and for the year ended June 30, 2024, and we issued an opinion stating that the financial statements are fairly presented in all material respects. So we're issuing a clean, unmodified opinion again this year for Acadian Center for the Arts. Yeah. Perfect, perfect, great, thank you very much. There's a lot of other stuff on page one and page two, but the main purpose of an audit is to issue an opinion. So we came out here, uh, performed our audit procedures, and we did issue a clean and modified opinion for ACA. On page three is ACA's statement of financial position. So this is a snapshot in time as of June 30th, 2024, showing the assets, liabilities, and net assets for ACA. Overall, total assets was $2.7 million as of June 30th. It comprises of total current assets of 924,000, the net property and equipment of 965,000, and then other assets, which are the investments of 848,000 to make up 2.7 million of assets. The current liabilities that ACA owed as of uh, June 30th, 2024, amounted to 262,000 the current liabilities, and then the long-term liabilities for the debt, 541,000, to make up total liabilities of 804,000. And then if you take the assets less the liabilities, you're ending up with net assets of a little less than $2 million, $1,933,000. And we break it up without donor restrictions, which can be used for any purpose in the future, of almost 600,000. And then with donor restrictions, which has to be used for those particular restrictions of $1,336,000. Page four uh, shows the statement of activities. So these are the revenues and expenses of ACA for the full year into June 30th, 2024. And again, we're showing those items that are without donor restrictions and then with donor restrictions and then a total of both. So revenue we have categorized as grants of 321,000 and then contributions and support, which total $4,149,000 to get total revenue for ACA for this year of $4,470,000. <laughs> and then once you back out the expenses, we had it broken out by program services, 2.6 million, and then administrative of 1,034,000, total expenses of 3.7 million roughly. This is adding for this year an increase in the net assets of ACA, 778,000 to get ACA to the 1.9 million of total net assets. Huge increase this year compared to previous years. Page five is a breakout in detail of the functional expenses. So we have each of the programs listed and then general and admin is the admin expenses to get to the total to the 3.7 million. The main expenses, um, as, as you can guess, artist fees of 715,000 this year, Donated goods and services of 257,000, as well as the facilities and equipment of 257,000. Pass-through sales and payments of 281,000. The professional and contract services of 258,000. And then the main salaries, benefits, and payroll taxes of 1,257,000 are the main functional expenses for ACA for this 12-month period. The last statement is the statement of cash flows, it shows the inflows and outflows of cash. And overall, there was a cash net increase of 426,000 for ACA as of June 30th to get total cash ending a little over 700,000. The last section are the notes to the financial statements. It's pretty lengthy. There's a lot of detail here. I'm not gonna go through it and, and read all this to you, but it is a good read to understand 
the accounting policies that ACA implements to the year, and then uh, any of the detailed specific line items show up in the rest of the footnote disclosures. Other than that, the last part of the audit is looking at internal control and compliance to see if there are any findings related to the audit. And again, this year we tried very desperately to find something. <laughs> find, and we did not have any findings this year for ACA again. So there were no material weaknesses and there were no compliance findings related to laws, regulations, and grants. the statewide agreed upon procedures that the legislative auditor requires us uh, to perform because we did perform an audit for ACA. We didn't have any exceptions, which means next year um, the procedures will be limited. We won't have to perform as many procedures next year because we didn't have any exceptions this year. Other than that, uh, are there any questions for me? We will submit this to the legislative auditor, so if you ask um, if Thank you all very much. Thank you, Jeremy. Irma had nothing on you. <laughs> really, thank you for your presentation and helping us stay on the right track. Uh, we've had a long relationship with you guys, and we we'll hope to keep it going. Thank you. So, we have. I have a motion to accept the uh, financial year 24 audit report from the board. So moved. Larry? All right. Second. Can I get a second? Minute. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The motion passes. And so having approved the, the audit uh, by the board, it's good to note that the audit will be on our website for all to see. So if anyone's interested, that's where you'll go for, um, for that information. This is the fun part. Are we ready for the fun part? Not that that wasn't fun, Jeremy. <laughs> that was a barrel of monkeys. Um, seeing the real impact of what we do here, this is what's coming up. I'd like to invite a few key people to help share this year's highlights. Please join me in welcoming development chair, co-chair, Nanette Hankey, President-elect Sarah Gauthier, Program Chair Alicia Cook, and our own very own Executive Director, Sam Wall. Take it away. everybody for being here. As Taylor mentioned, I'm Sam Oliver, I'm the executive director here. Uh, so we're going to present our impact report for the past fiscal year. Uh, I really wanted to do this together uh, with our board leadership, our president-elect, our program chair, our development co-chair, uh, because aside from the amazing, talented team of ACA, it's the volunteer leadership within the board itself uh, who helped drive all these things from the ground up. So I want to welcome Nanette Hagee uh, to come talk about Finances again. <laughs> Jeremy, I feel you. I used to be an IRS tax auditor, so I never got applause. Hopefully tonight will be better. Thank you for joining us today, and I'm excited to share our impact over the year, beginning with a financial recap. This year we saw an impressive growth in revenue, reaching $4.47 million, up significantly from 3.15 million in the previous fiscal year. Our program expenses also increased to 2.66 million, reflecting our continued investment in impactful programming. And our total assets at the year end grew to 2.74 million, as Jeremy let us know. <laughs> The year before, we had only had 1.95 million, so that's a significant growth. These numbers speak to our growing stability and to the support of our community. I'd like to acknowledge our finance committee, led by Mike Munzing, 
for he and his committee's great stewardship and our amazing operations team led by Fawn Hernandez. Hey guys. They have worked tirelessly to ensure this growth. And of course, a heartfelt thanks to our major sponsors and partners whose support made all of this possible. Our fundraising events saw incredible engagement this year. The Pelican Ball, which you can all attend December 7th, uh, the Sunnyside Jazz Brunch in April, and Gulf Brew that we just had, brought in thousands of community members out to support the ACA's work and raised close to half a million dollars. Membership also grew significantly with the Revitalized Membership Program, we hosted four Insider Salon gallery nights and five President Circle VIP receptions and now have 685 members. Yeah. These people are donors who support our work year round and know the impact of the arts. Finally, we launched our $18 million Lead Culture Lead campaign a bold initiative to expand all of our major community programming and ensure ACA's long-term sustainability. Thank you to our development teams led by Kareem Spray. Where are you, Kareem? Hey. Yay. And our development committee led by myself and Melissa Maker, who is tirelessly recruiting people to buy tickets and sponsorships for Pelican Ball. December the 7th. Which she got shares with Olivia Rebond. Your work and leadership make our vision and the future possible. So now I'll hand it over to Sam Oliver. Thank you so much, Jeanette. Uh, thank you for the plugs for Pelican Ball as well. Uh, you know, the leadership in the development committee has been incredible these past years under your stewardship and Melissa's as well. So thank you all both, really. Uh, so I want to turn to our visual arts programming first. Uh, we had a remarkable year. We showcased a wide variety of talent. I'm thinking about especially our main gallery series uh, downstairs at our real premier exhibition space. Uh, the Martin Payton exhibition in fall of 2023 drew 2,685 just daytime visitors. Uh, and included public programs like his artist talk, Knowledge from the Elder, where he really shared his story as an artist to a great, great crowd of people, uh, you know, going beyond just what work on the walls, really hearing from the artist himself. You know, in winter 2024, uh, we featured In Media Race, uh, an exhibition that <laughs> engaged 10,500 visitors, a great number, including 97 tours, uh, including hands-on art-making workshops, creative writing workshops, things that really went beyond the exhibition itself and engaged with a wider creative thinking. Uh, that, that show was all artwork, uh, a number of artists responding to the work of Poet Laureate Daryl Bork. Uh, our open call exhibition, Ceramics Now, uh, featured maybe the largest number of artists highlighted in a single exhibition. 45 artists from around Acadiana, all working in clay. Uh, many of whom we had never heard of before, who came out for our open call. So those exhibitions that are open calls are always very rewarding because they help expose us as well as the general public to new incredible artwork. Overall, we curated 10 solo exhibitions, four group exhibitions that featured over 100 Louisiana artists uh, in our galleries, as well as connecting to audiences of all ages, especially through our partnerships in the school system. This work wouldn't be possible, uh, without our visual arts team led by Jake Falk. Jake, where are you? There we go, Jake Falk. And our visual arts committee led by Jamie Baldridge. So we'll talk about performing arts now. Performing arts had an equally vibrant year. I'm taller than some of these people, so I've got to uh, Performing arts had an equally vibrant year. Uh, our all-star series brought six very memorable, incredible concerts. Uh, including a standout performance about a year ago at this time by Cecile McLaurin Salvant, uh, who just headlined for the Paris Symphony Orchestra, uh, if you've heard of that. <laughs> so, some real stellar international talents. Uh, the next series, one of our newer programs, uh, gave a platform to four emerging local artists and included a sellout incredible night by Neva Easy, uh, a full, full house, a lot of new faces at ACA. 
uh, Louisiana Crossroads continues to engage audiences, uh, continuing into its, I think, about 180th performance uh, this past year. And you know, many more than that in terms of the actual number of artists presented. But this year included, notably, the 50th anniversary celebration for the band Beau Soleil. Uh, and our Spotlight Theater and Dance series included four productions, uh, all of them with a local tie, and including this War Box, uh, an all locally written, produced, uh, musical, locally written music, a wide, wide cast of characters, uh, and also actors, and uh, included four completely sold out performances here in the James O. Funkus Theater. So in total, we hosted 35 live performances with an average attendance of about 70% in the James O. Funkus Theater. Nine of these shows were completely sold out, uh, which is always so gratifying for us. Uh, you know, we, we give our deepest gratitude to our Performing Arts Committee, uh, Rob Bush, Jessica Foreman, and our new Performing Arts Director, Brandon Boats. Brandon in the house. Hey, Brandon. <laughs> but also, especially, our front of house team. The people who are greeting, meeting the public, and our technical team behind the scenes who will hopefully never meet or greet the public because if they do something terrible has happened. <laughs> uh, Without their work and support, no production, no incredible experience in theater would be possible. So, I'm going to pass it off to Sarah Goche, our president-elect, to talk a little bit about arts in education. Thanks, Sam. Um, so, education remains at the heart of our mission. Uh, also, in my heart, uh, the education department is really near and dear to me. Uh, I think it's that huge impact we have that not a lot of people see and know about. Um, so through our arts and education program, we conducted over 12,000 activities through 86 schools in Lafayette, Vermilion, and St. Landry Parishes. Our arts experiences for all initiative brought 91 performances and 120 museum tours to more than 25,000 pre-K to eighth grade students. Like, I can't remember seeing much in pre-K to eighth grade. I'm sure neither can you. So it's really amazing that we're doing that for our kids. Um, and this summer, our 30 camps are 450 youth, including many from at-risk populations. And finally, the two student art expos showcased over 1,000 student works, drawing more than 6,000 families to celebrate young talent. Um, if you were the, like you feel the energy at these events and it's really something special but um, it's all a testament to our dedicated staff who's led by the amazing Bree sergeant who i can't say enough <laughs> um, and our team of more than 40 teaching artists who inspire young minds daily uh, we also want to thank our school partners lafayette parish school system and st landry school board and vermilion parish school board because our partnership ensures that we continue to enrich lives through the arts education at its broadest possible scale. And we're looking forward to, as years go on, getting into our full nine parish region and really reaching out and touching, I hope these numbers grow exponentially. Um, and I'll hand it off now to Alicia Cook to talk about community development. All right, well, thank you, Sarah. Um, so beyond all other programs, programming, we've deepened our community impact. Through, a crea cr through Creative Acadiana, we held 14 workshops and programs equipping individual artists, musicians, and creatives with entrepreneurial skills. Our ArtSpark grants awarded $50,000 to 10 talented artists, and in total, we invested over $250,000 in Acadiana's creatives and cultural organizations. This work is all about growing and growing the creative community and the art scene here in Lafayette and Acadiana so that we can continue to grow as a unique place with culture at our heart. These initiatives couldn't be possible without the hard work of our community programs team led by Gwen Richard and Anna Kujevnikov. <laughs> and the collaboration of our Community Development Committee that's led by Adrian King, who's not here this evening. A special thanks to our partners at Lafayette Economic Development Authority, National Endowment for the Arts, excuse me, National Endowment for the Arts, the Office of the Lieutenant Governor, and Lafayette Consolidated Government. 
for enabling us to empower our local artists. Now I'll pass it back to Sam to close. We had a script, guys. <laughs> for the suggestion, uh, I also want to note on the community development front uh, that we're also recognizing uh, one of our team members, our community development director, Gwen Richard, uh, who just celebrated 18 years with the Acadian Center. <laughs> She also will be retiring this December. <laughs> now, we, we celebrate Gwen, her work, her incredible dedication. Uh, I just want to say on behalf of the ACA, thank you for your work, your magnificent connection to the community. You've brought this organization and our impact into places that it would have never gone. So thank you, Gwen. Thank you. And she reminds us daily since she you know, announced her retirement about a year ago. Uh, <laughs> She was, she's not going anywhere. The really. long goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> so we're excited to have Gwen stay a part of this community, our membership, our, our all of our activities. Uh, so before closing as well, I just want to it, you know acknowledge everybody who makes this work possible. Uh, our incredible staff of more than 30 people now. In, in the growth of our programs, we have more professional faces, talents, and skills of, around the you know offices every day doing incredible work. All of them wildly overworked. Are you wildly overworked? Everybody raise your hand. Uh, you know, an incredible team, uh, an incredible board of directors that I've had the pleasure to serve with, but also participate very actively with collaboratively uh, in helping build representation within the board of parts of the community uh, that we serve. So I really want to thank our board of directors, uh, especially Ronnie Daigle, our outgoing president who couldn't be here this evening, our new president, Taylor Davis, the 400 volunteers, 400 plus volunteers, who over the year gave their times and talents uh, to support all of this impact. Our sponsors, our donors, our members. If you're in this room, you're a member of the ACA. Congratulations. Thank you for sustaining a thriving arts society here in Acadiana. Uh, we've achieved some remarkable milestones. So uh, together, we have the pleasure and the privilege uh, to shape the next 50 years the Acadiana Center for the Arts. So I wouldn't I wouldn't rather do it with anybody else. So thank you for being a part of this. I'll give it back to Taylor. Thank you all for an excellent presentation. Wow, the numbers are big, aren't they? Just wait, they're getting bigger. <laughs> and the heart of the work is even bigger. It's clear to me and I hope to all of you that what we're doing here matters. This is real, tangible impact, and every one of us has a role to play in making the mission happen. Looking ahead, I'm excited to share a sneak peek of something transformative, our Let Culture Lead initiative. This is an $18 million campaign. It is the biggest campaign ACA has ever done, and it's going to ensure that this work continues to grow and thrive for years to come. We're talking about expanding programs, creating new opportunities, and making sure this organization is sustainable for generations. I can't wait, Jeremy. Did you leave? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait to see the book, the audits coming forward with the growth that we're about that's about to happen. To tell us more, I'd like to invite Sam Oliver back to the podium. Sam, the floor is yours. Why, thank you, Taylor. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I'm glad to transition from the annual report, uh, where we really wanted to cover the breadth and depth of what has happened in this organization uh, in the past fiscal year, but now we get to look ahead uh, and the work that we're really doing now, and that we've been actively engaged with for some time, but we did to begin to unveil piece by piece. Uh, our board has heard of many of these things because they're very deeply involved in the development of our programs, but this is always a great opportunity to really pull back the curtain on work in progress, whether very publicly unveiled or not. So, uh, this is a big, bold plan. It's made up of five pathways. This is, this is how we've broken down uh, the Let Culture Lead campaign, which is all about the implementation and funding of ACA's strategic plan over the next 
uh, five years now, it's through 2030. Uh, the heart of it is in teaching our culture, investing in our culture, living our culture, building our culture, sharing our culture. It's about the culture, right? <laughs> uh, but each of these is kind of a vein or a real pathway of the, of the beating heart of the arts in Acadiana. And we want to, you know, in some cases there's some blockage, you know, throw a little stint down there. And in some cases we want to really just make sure that there's great growing blood flow to help grow the community and send oxygen where it needs to be sent. And a lot of that time, that oxygen in our work as a nonprofit organization comes in the way of fundraising. So here we are celebrating the oxygen, which is letting us uh, breathe new life into the arts in Acadiana over the next 50 years. Uh, so let's talk about teach our culture. Uh, so teaching our culture is about ensuring that every young person in Acadiana has access to the benefits of arts in their education. Today, they do not. Today, there are many, many, many rural communities in particular, and many, many, many urban communities throughout the Acadiana region, which, as you know, is largely rural, uh, that have virtually zero access to music, dance, theater, etc. in their education. Uh, this program is about increasing its access there, especially in public schools where we know that the exposure is the broadest. Uh, this is Acadiana for the USA. Everybody should be able to participate in our culture. So, we've launched uh, a vision, the Visionaries, which is a group of incredible donors, each committed to giving $15,000 a year for five years to support this implementation. And we've been building this group. Uh, these gifts are matched gifts. They challenge others, foundations, businesses, philanthropists, to help us grow this impact across the region. The areas that have the smallest schools and most rural communities also have the fewest resources. So this, this group is about extending that impact. I really want to acknowledge uh, and thank uh, Carolyn Doral Schumacher, her husband Kip, and Rodney and Cindy Savoy for leading the Visionaries group. Uh, they truly built this group, and I'll have much more to say about that. Uh, so this group, has spurred already the first major new investment from the Vermilion Parish Foundation. Uh, so we now are able to expand fully into Vermilion Parish in arts and education, parish-wide, uh, thanks to a $125,000 gift from the Vermilion Foundation, the largest gift they have ever made as an entity. Uh, they were the first group to answer this challenge. They were thrilled to do it. They were excited by the energy from their from the Vermilion Parish superintendent and their school leadership, seeing the role that the arts could play in improving education in Vermilion Parish. Uh, so this is all propelling forward now. We are in this moment. Uh, our goal is $3 million in total. That's including the visionaries, which are now really a confirmed group. The next group, which are the matched gifts that start to come in through that challenge match that's now extra exciting and extra possible, and also participation from the districts themselves, who have to put skin in the game, because this isn't just about funding one-off implementations, this is about funding and expansion. As they put skin in the game, they see the impact, they feel the reward of it, and these programs become sustainable for the long term. Uh, so, that comes to our goal. So, so far now we have raised, in this pathway, one million, $25,000 for this It's been 12 months, so I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's real impact. Uh, it's, it's a pivotal moment in this expansion, and I'm really excited everybody can be here to be a part of it. Uh, I want to actually share a video uh, that just shows a little more of the side of what this expansion means. artists is bringing arts experiences to students across the region. Are you guys excited about art today? Yeah. We work across all art forms, all grade levels, pre-K through 12th grade. Any given week, nearly 7,000 students are getting an arts experience in their classrooms and in these programs. We bring arts to students because it is powerful. It is learning. 
it is creative, it is joyful. But what's most important to us is that we're teaching to the whole child and creating well-rounded future adults who will live and work here in our community. And the arts really do that. The arts build confidence and create a space for critical thinking and problem solving. And those are all things we need. That's I think what the arts can do for us that is beyond just painting a picture. Let me see you sway, let me see you sway again. Good, let me see you twist. Art is important to students because it gets them in their curious minds of thinking different. It increases their confidence, it allows them to learn how to express themselves, to see the world in a different way, and it gets them creativity flowing. The arts benefit our students because they're given some space to create, to move, to dance, to draw and paint, when they don't have enough time in their normal school day to do that. It also reinforces concepts learned in their course section. It's well documented that educational outcomes that we know follow the arts and follow cultural exposure, things like truancy, things like social and emotional development, and real skills like public speaking, like creativity as a skill. They're all muscles that need to be worked, and the arts have the beautiful benefit of working each and every one. It's all about if you win to win. What we see when we go into schools, when we bring performances in front of young people, you see transformation. You see young people going from being closed to being open. You see them going from being disengaged to all up. For so many of the students that we work with in these schools, these are the first arts experiences that we've ever had. And we hope it's not their last. I mean, that's pretty powerful, right? Yes. So, we're, we're thrilled to continue that expansion. Uh, you know, we're in three parishes now, we serve eight, uh, so, so we've got some work to do, but we're doing it. So that's the most exciting part. And we'll have, hopefully have a lot more to share in this vein 12 months from now. So let's talk about another one of these pathways in Let Culture Be, uh, investing in our culture. Uh, so Acadian's talent, as we all know, is unmatched. Uh, but the opportunities are limited. The investment has certainly been limited. Uh, we have been diving into a new and very exciting venture here at the ACA uh, to create a film scoring studio, an enterprise as a part of the Acadian Center for the Arts. This project is about creating opportunities for Louisiana musicians, you know, some of our most talented artists in the state, uh, opportunities in the areas of film, TV, and video game scoring, Industries with immense potential for growth, where the vast, vast majority goes everywhere else in the world. But nonetheless, the talent is here. And that's because there is not a conduit to connect those two things. So we have a need, we have an opportunity. So we're thrilled to announce uh, a new partnership. A partnership with Louisiana Economic Development, Lafayette Consolidated Government, and business sponsors and supporters uh, to help build a new Louisiana scoring studio, bringing literally hundreds of jobs to Louisiana musicians right here in Lafayette. Uh, let's look at, so in order to do this, we knew we'd have to raise about a million dollars. So it seemed a little far-fetched. It's a big project, it's an international industry. How could we as a small nonprofit begin to bite off this massive elephant. So we said we'd do it a little chunk at a time, we'd figure it out. And so we went and spoke to our partners and made the pitch, and what happened? They funded the entire thing. <laughs> so we are now effectively uh, ready to launch the Louisiana Scoring Studio. 
uh, our new uh, program manager of the, of the studio, David Boudreaux. David, are you good this evening? He plays a lot of gigs too, so possibly not. So David Boudreaux has been working on this with Vaughn Hernandez, our deputy director, to build out the beginning of this program. Uh, they'll be facing a public launch, but this is about you know, the, especially using the incredible assets of our facility as a studio, but also uh, building out a cadre of artists of incredible talent and connecting them to these opportunities. So we made a little sizzle reel uh, just to show what this looks like, because if you've never been in a studio for scoring or something like this, it can be a little foreign. So you'll see the space that is actually the James Odom Monkey's Theater, flat floor in the middle of uh, one of our earliest test scoring sessions. And the score that was recorded at that time. But none of them quite even as talented as one of our 
uh, locals, Jane the Dream, who is the inaugural director. Join our team tonight, so welcome as well, Jane. Uh, of course, I'm on a video kick, so I'm going to give you, this is actually a draft video, we got it this morning, so it still needs to be color corrected, people need to still have little subtitles underneath them, but given the opportunity, I really wanted to show you our first promo video, and some of our first marketing content for the Music Museum. Louisiana is a place where people, culture, and places melt together. In the heart of Lafayette, the Acadiana Center for the Arts is building the new Louisiana Music Museum. Louisiana Music connects people across the world to our home and its cultures. That's why when people come to Louisiana, they never want me because they can feel um, a connection to it. Because the French were here, the Haitians were here, the Africans were here, the Spanish were here. Everybody left their mark here, and that's why people feel so connected. And that's why they cannot possibly produce one genre of music because it made all of them. <laughs> Louisiana music to me means family and community. The music demands your participation. Because if you come to Louisiana, your hair will start moving, your feet will start tapping, and then somebody's going to come and invite you to dance. It's going to be a family-friendly place where you can go dance, listen to music. It's more than a beautiful idea. It's going to happen in a beautiful place. The old Lafayette Hardware Store in downtown Lafayette is a historic building full of character and memories located right next door to the Acadiana Center for the Arts. I want people to Louisiana Music Museum. I want people to find what they were looking for, but also be surprised and find something new. The Louisiana Music Museum is a place to dive into the history of Louisiana's diverse musical genres. New Orleans, jazz and funk, Shreveport, rockabilly and country, Baton Rouge, gospel and blues, and of course, Cajun, Anzotico, and swap pop from the heart of Acadiana. The Louisiana Music Museum will tell stories from across this state. I've seen musicians bring people together on a corner from all type of races and backgrounds. They just all come on that Frenchman corner and they all dance and I love that. You can't get more bring people together than Louisiana music. From traditional roots to the globally connected present, this cultural center will present the unique stories of all Louisiana music with accuracy, inclusivity, and innovation. Louisiana, let's keep the music playing. So, you know, I'm thrilled for this project. There's been a lot, a lot of work going into it, and there's so much more uh, to come out of it. Too. So remember that all of you are invited to participate in this work. Uh, this is an outgrowth of everything ACA has done for 50 years and where we want to be in the next 50 years. Uh, this is our legacy and it's one of many legacies, but I think it'll be a very special one that helps educate the public day after day. Uh, so, you know, where do we stand across all those pathways towards our total goal? Let's, let's bring it up. All right, so towards our $18 million goal announced one year ago, we are at $4.4 million raised, which is about 25%. I'm feeling this one. Uh, we've built this as truly a, you know, a, a 2030 initiative. Uh, our goal is to conduct these expansions, uh, build out the work of the organization, advance the arts in Acadiana through our work as a lever, uh, and through, through this fundraising and this progress. I'm thrilled by this number. I'm thrilled how much progress we've made 12 short, short months. Uh, my daughter's first birthday is tomorrow. Uh, so it's been a busy year, too. <laughs> uh, I'm glad we found time to do some fundraising. <laughs> I don't know where that happened. Uh, so what's next? That's the other question. So the final pathway uh, worth talking about this evening is we go into our 50th anniversary. It is about the future. It's about where do we want to leave the legacy of this organization? So 
to support our growing programs and our growing ambitions, uh, we need a significant endowment, uh, a foundation that ensures ACA remains a pillar of this community long into the future. Our goal is a $5 million endowment. Uh, as you saw earlier in this from our CPA, uh, the very charismatic Jeremy Mo, uh, and Annette talking about our, our uh, current state, you know, we, we have an asset balance of just under $2 million, which is, which is healthy. But given the scale of the work we do at about a $4 million budget, it's just not sufficient. It is not the rudder that the organization needs, the real, um, sorry, the keel, my apologies, the keel that the organization needs that helps stabilize the organization year after year. Uh, Taylor's the rudder. <laughs> uh, so, we need your help, and this is your invitation. Don't worry, it won't be your last one. Uh, if you're planning your estate, consider a tax advantage contribution. Or if you're looking to leave a personal legacy, or maybe the legacy uh, recognizing a family member or a friend, we hope you'll think of the ACA. We've had some really, like, truly inspiring gifts that were left uh, in memory of people who passed in the past couple of years during my time at ACA. Uh, you know, I just think about Jack Paul Showers who passed away this past year and left the Play It Again instrument recycling program. Uh, his family said he cared about this work. He wanted young people to have access to instruments. They knew that ACA had a program that did this, uh, which had been, you know, working at a relatively small scale. We put maybe more than 500 instruments down for the hands of young people across the Canadiana that otherwise couldn't afford them was free. Uh, in his obituary, you know, it said in lieu of flowers and contributions, you know, make a gift to the Play It Again program at the Acadia Center for the Arts. Raised $10,000. Uh, fully funded the program for four years. Uh, so just thinking of the ways in which music, art, theater, culture has impacted our lives through our lives and the work of this organization in 50 years of work has touched on everybody, whether or not they know it. We know it's our job to tell the story. We know it's our job to make the connection and make the case. But my hope is, and my invitation is, that uh, many of us, many of you, uh, will participate in this and help us build uh, the real keel for this organization that helps us work continue for decades and decades to come. So thank you for being a part of this story. Um, you know, we're not just preserving and giving us culture, we're letting it lead. Hey. hey. Uh, so let's keep the momentum going. 2025 will be our best year yet, our 50th year. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> a lot of cool stuff going on. Um, thank you, Sam. Uh, this is a big deal, and it's going to take all of us, our time, our resources, our connections, to make it happen. But I know we're up to the challenge, because we've seen what ACA can do. Together we can achieve this and the impact would be incredible. Before I wrap up, I want to remind everybody about some important upcoming events and committee meetings. ACA depends on its members to take an active role in leading these efforts. If you're not already involved, please consider stepping up. Here's what's coming up. 50th, 50th Anniversary Committee, November 25th, 5 p.m. at the ACA. Community Development, December 4th, 4.30 p.m. New, new initiative for growing Canaan's creative economy. Performing Arts Committee, December 4th, 5.30 p.m. Exciting plan for the upcoming season. It's the Funds Committee. <laughs> Finance Committee, December 11th. Long term growth strategy for the ACA. It's fun now that it's holiday. <laughs> Development it's Committee, up. December 12th, 4 p.m., pushing forward with Life Culture Lead and Annual Giving. And what's happening on December 7th? Mm -hmm. Hello, Hello. 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 Before we adjourn, is there any other business to discuss? So is there going to be a disco band or disco fellow? No, no, but there's a disco there is a disco fellow. She or she will be unveiled. We're gonna I think we're gonna have a naming contest. Is that? 
Did you say disco? Disco yeah. Pelican. Oh, disco Pelican. All right. Fabulous. All right. Any other input? Dan. Yeah, I just want to take this opportunity to recognize Erica Fox, who today at the LCBC annual meeting was presented the Patrick Hardy Inspiration Award for her work in generating tourism to our city.